I've been drinking, floating, caught in my emotions, losing my mind. Take your hands and give them back. Stop in the name of love, as that one song once said once in their lyrics. Music. Everyone loves it. Because much like how people are from different walks of life, everyone enjoys music, just different genres. Maybe you're a classical man or Beethoven and the other Das Boys from Germany. Maybe you like jazz. Maybe you're really into the energetic Eurobeat dubstep remixes. Or maybe you just like some lo-fi hip-hop at the end of the day. And you probably do because it seems like everyone loves lo-fi hip. Maybe too many people like it. But the point is, no matter who you are, no matter what you like, you're always right because it's your style of music. It's what you choose, unless you like dubstep, because then uh, you're wrong. My point is that even if you really, really dislike a certain song or a certain genre or a certain creator, that being Pitbull, if you air that distaste, people from somewhere across the globe will hastily rush to defend their favorite whatever. Even if their favorite whatever was a person that played patty cake with someone's face, that being a woman's face, and instead of an open hand, it's like a fist, or maybe a gun, because we don't know yet. I'm talking about Chris Brown. He may have threatened a woman with a gun, but I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure he did. Thank you, Chris Brown. So I thought it would be fun uh, for me, not for you. What makes music by YouTubers completely fine, but YouTuber music specifically completely shit. And I know what you're saying, wow, this is, a, this is an amazing idea. And I must say, I know, because I've done like a hundred of them, and uh, one of them has to be good. I realize now in my ineffable wisdom that it may actually pose a challenge to find appropriate B-roll footage to place in the background right now. So cast your votes now in the comment section below. Type A if you want me to have no background footage and you want this to stop, please, God, make it stop. Or B, have background footage. But I warn you, I'm voting for B and my vote is worth infinity plus one. Now outside of research for my own videos, I've actually watched a significant amount of YouTube and music videos, so to speak, because what can I say? I just really adore the cinematography. There is cinematography. They use cameras. I like cameras. The main critique against the songs and the accompanying music videos is that despite being made by separate people from completely different walks of life, mainly being uh, rich ones, they all sound exactly the same. It's something that once someone points it out to you, you really can't not see it anymore. Like someone chewing with their mouth open, bad facial hair, or continuity errors. You know, there's the, the obvious ones, the, the Lances, the uh, Polars, uh, the Jacob Satori, uh, I, he's, What's the plural for? You know, it doesn't matter. The point is that when it comes to big creators cashing in by making bland, shitty music, point a finger in any direction and you'll find someone for sure. But the trend reaches even further than that. Again, this revelation isn't exactly the big bang of revelations. Bazinga. But it is really interesting in the fact that there is essentially a subculture of the music industry based solely around creating what is in many ways the exact same song, but just for different creators. I think this is the part where I should point out that uh, the music industry actually does this a lot. This is a common practice where a billion people will be working on a single song and its video. You know, there'll be writers, producers, editors, uh, cinematographers, all that kind of good stuff. But usually, the person who is actually the figurehead of that song has some kind of talent because they have to have worked up to having that much money rather than, I don't know, being an accountant for 17 years and then spending that money on music. Most of the time they have something that they can add by themselves to that song. Like, I don't know, being able to fucking rap or sing. The most obvious, most overused, but still most relevant example in this case is our favorite ex-family YouTuber, Ricegum. Ricegum is an interesting channel especially in this context for this video specifically, because he's actually been uploading raps and music 
for about as long as his channel has existed as Rascom and been consistently uploading under that name. He's always had a close link with Raps because he started it very early on in his videos. So he would be the first and best choice, you would think, to break the YouTuber music mold, but of course not, because why the fuck would he? And this is why I brought him up in the first place, because despite the fact Rascom at one point did everything himself, you know, the lyrics, production, everything in between, all of that, it does not automatically grant you amnesty from being called YouTuber music, so to speak, because there is a secret ingredient that you need to ascend from these ranks, and it's called passion, also known as giving a shit, just anything at all, caring a, a little bit. Dear God, man. It's not shocking to anyone that the quality of Ricegum's songs and videos has jumped significantly once he moved to LA and was suddenly surrounded by a bunch of way more talented and way more driven people who did basically everything else for him apart from deliver the lines, which is arguably the weakest part and the least you could possibly do. The singular dude hanging lighting fixtures is probably doing more work than he is. That fact becomes incredibly apparent once you watch the Gabby Show diss track, because despite the fact it is the third video released in a three month period that also included It's Every Night Sis and God Church, which among other things, is his best work so far, even though it's terrible. The Gambit Show diss track, which should have been a culmination of those last two videos and those last two songs, is completely shit because he admits in the song he wrote it himself. Why would you do that? That's not proving a point if it sucks. It's also the only song out of those three that I can't find any production credits for, you know, like writing and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I completely believe that he wrote this one himself, as it sounds exactly like his very first raps on his channel when he had no experience and he clearly didn't care. He has less character development than an 80s sitcom that got cancelled after the fucking pilot. Since he's moved to LA, every single one of his songs has had multiple writing credits on it, even though this is rap, you know, the genre where you're expected to do all of the writing yourself, I guess not, Ricegum doesn't do that. In fact, he's not even a fucking writer on any of his songs, except for Fortnite and Chill, because I guess he was really passionate about the creative direction of that specific song. I don't even really know, that song was kind of shit as well. But either way, he doesn't actually do the production himself, which isn't exactly expected, but it would have been a nice bonus. Now, he hasn't done that for ever, because he gets a team called Dream Addicts to do it for him, as well as the cinematography and the editing and basically everything that is actually kind of good. Except for his Gabby Show diss track, where he uses a remix of a Drake production that already exists, the camera movement doesn't really have any thought behind it, there's no real drive behind the camera, it usually pushes him way too close and makes it claustrophobic, the lyrics just are absolutely abysmal because Everything that he's gained from LA has been stripped away from him for a split second and you gain this moment of clarity where you realize, oh, you don't, you don't care, you just want money. Oh, fuck. Speaking of money, Jake Paul enters the fray and ruins everything again. Now, even though I've spent the last however long talking about Rice Gum and his music, Jake Paul is far worse with how he does it. He completely embodies everything I was using Ricegum as an example for, and more. Jake has a surprising amount of songs under his belt, especially for someone who did not come mainly from the music industry and does not devote most of their time to it. But his songs are insultingly basic and almost aggressively shit because nobody involved cares. Which leads me to why creators even bother with music if they don't care about it creatively, if they don't want to work on it, and they just don't like making music. It's because money. All of Jake's songs are ridiculously basic, both in their concept and lyricism. It seems like he was just texting someone and whatever they were talking about just became a song. Like, ah, dude, I just broke up. Hold on. Ideas Factory running, song about being single. I'm single. Bro, Jake Paul is of the best fans. The musical. Rascal makes music because of money, but also because he wants the cloud of being able to call himself a rapper. Jake makes music because it is an extension of his already existing brand and the rampant marketing of that brand and merchandise, which makes sense because 
His songs are almost exactly like his merchandise. Bland, uninspired, shitty quality, and almost entirely made by somebody else. <laughs> and yet both of them are still YouTuber music, which is why the topic is so interesting to me, because how strange is it that we, as the young, hip kids that we are, including myself, I'm hip, I'm, a, I'm young. We have a word now that specifically means a YouTuber making music solely for the revenue that it gains rather than the creative outlet that it offers. What the fuck is going on? Here is where you would expect me to list some more obvious examples. You know, someone who had a big fuss about them made by certain people for having a particularly bad song. Uh, specifically, Gabrielle Hanna. Uh, guess how many songs she's written? Yeah, all of them, actually. Don't get me wrong, Monster was a complete piece of shit, and I don't think anyone should listen to it. The memes are completely justified. But the rest of her music, especially the more recent ones, aren't immediate one out of tens like Jake's music and the rest of her contemporaries. I wouldn't call it good. I wouldn't call it great. I wouldn't really even call it neutral. But I wouldn't immediately classify it as complete shit. And maybe it's just because I want to believe. Maybe I'm just slightly hopeful. Maybe she thinks of this music as something more than a way to make a number on a spreadsheet bigger. Oh no! That's the, this has been going on for too long graphic insert that I haven't figured out yet and we'll find out in post. Uh, so I'm gonna leave this with some recommendations for music made by YouTubers that isn't YouTuber music uh, copyright, basically meaning it isn't terrible and it has some passion behind it. Cody Ko and Noelle Miller, also known as TMG, uh, mainly a comedy rap group, but it's actually pretty solid apart from the comedy even if you do not like the jokes in the songs which uh, why would you not the songs themselves kind of stand by this by themselves i think I, I think it's worth checking out for one reason or another an obvious one here bionic pig he's been music related uh since before he was talking about it on his channel before it was a core part of it he has normal songs he has joke songs something there will entice you Chris Reagan, hilarious man, but also a pretty talented musician, uh, especially with the guitar. He actually uploaded all of his uh, original songs from about five years ago onto Spotify, and they're pretty good. I, I think they're quite nice. You should check them out. And finally, Nakey Jakey, also known as just Jakey on Spotify, whose music will be described in a separate, longer, and a bit more serious of a video. Uh, but apart from that, thank you for watching. See you around.